Hi there. Welcome once again to the Instructor's Compass. Our topic for this moment is Philippines Today, What's Next? What will happen next to our dear Philippines? This is your online instructor, Sir Noy Gonzaga, and I hope that we will have a productive discussion again this very moment. Philippines as a nation has a history of international dependencies and alliances that help secure its international agenda. Of course, this is what we call as diplomacy. Unlike the methodology of United States and China, we cannot be aggressive physically because we do not have the art artillery that is equivalent to those two superpowers. Thus, there is only one option left that will make Philippines sustainable in the next few decades or even in the next century, and that is excellence in international diplomacy. It is an imagination to evade and snap the United snub, I mean, the United States, for it is an obvious fact that we need them in the war against the global pandemic. We need their vaccines. We need their support in the natural calamities and disasters that visits our country. And even at some points, we need their support for our national security. Thus, instead of completely alienating them, we need to go back to the table and talk things over so that we can attain fairness and responsible representation on paper that will mean good and reasonable diplomatic edge for us. Honestly, we cannot depend on the physical strength of our country for now. The sad reality is, even with the nearby nations in Southeast Asia, when there will be encounters and chaos, we may even handily lost with the kind of military and protective equipment that we as a nation possess. That is why we need to put our tongue in areas that it will exist with proofs and with benefits. I would like to give as an example the Western Philippine Sea issue. The world knows that Philippines won in the Hague Court regarding the ownership of the disputed areas in Spratlys or in the South China Sea. However, you can just witness how our victory becomes a lame duck when China will not respect or honor the decision of the International Maritime Court in Hague. So it is possible that we can win cases in diplomacy but we can still lost in physical struggles or wars, especially if we do not have the correct alliances that will protect our national interests. The West Philippine Sea is a great reminder of our capacity to guard our territory. Now moving farther, our national resources still in Spratly's area. We have a spot there that promises a lot of oil, but Philippines has no exploratory capacity economically because we do not have the equipments to drill down there. Now, we seek again the help of the people we want the sovereignty from, which is China. So think about this. We won the battle, but we let the enemy help us take the prize, and now the enemy might just find another way to hostage our right to the victory that we have savored already. These are the kind of delicate positions of the Philippines when it comes to struggles in international issues and arena. Thus, in the question, what is next for Philippines? Well, the immediate next is always to have the diplomatic urge in place and continuously done. We need others now to help our own successes realized. On the process, 
we need to also provide budget for modernization of our physical artillery, whether on the military or on the research status or areas. We cannot depend throughout life to countries which only make friends with us because they can also gain from us. Someday, when that need will be gone, can we still desire the same support from these countries or from these sovereigns? Philippines should have a long-range program of self-sufficiency in all the aspects of governance and systems that affect the Filipino existence. This will not take only one president to do the change. This will need continuity so that there will be successions and ladderized improvements that can be realized in the future. Well, we cannot deny the fact that the greatest hindrance to the national program is always politics as people in governance actually wanted to leave a legacy that will engrave their names. So if one project springs up from one politician and continually reaches the next administration, that will mean credit to the original and not to the present administration. So tendency will be that the present administration will not support such a project. If you will analyze this one in fair and square manner, this is still crab mentality or colonial spirit in place. Why? Our leaders would rather take it as equality when everybody is down and no one is up if everyone cannot be up. That is the most irresponsible reality, yet the actual obvious occurrence that is happening right now. So for Philippines, if the next step is for the greatness of this country, it's time to put our personal agenda down and think holistically of this country. Let us select leaders who can lead us without political baggages, without political dynasties to protect, and without political debt of gratitude to pay by corrupting their government and their governance. We need a Philippines that will exist for the people, by the people, and through the people. Why? Because the voice of the people is the voice of God. Vox Populi, Vox Di. It is a great time learning Philippine history, dear online learners. There are negatives and positives, but all of them are great tools for realization and improvement. Let the change of the next Philippines start with us. Again, this is your instructor's compass. And this is your online instructor, Sir Noy Gonzaga. Have a great day, Philippines. Mabuhay ka, Pilipino.